Something scary is happening in the world of AI building that you need to know about. When we use tools like Cursor, Grok, GPT, Claude, DeepSeek, whatever, to build stuff, they do a great job. The problem is they're people pleasing and they don't know when they don't know how to do something. So what happens is they hallucinate package names and now malicious actors out there are taking those commonly hallucinated package names and putting them into the package registries as malware. When we're vibe coding in cursor, for example, and we ask, hey, add this, add this feature, add this feature, what happens is LLMs, they don't tell you if they don't know or they can't do it, they'll just make it up. And generally that's called hallucination. So as it's just making shit up, it's making up package names and it's putting it into your code. And normally that just wouldn't exist and there'd be an error. But what's happening is there's these bad actors that are making package names and uploading them to the registries that are the names of these commonly hallucinated package names. A normal user prompts the large language model to generate the code and it generates that code using package whatever. But sometimes that package may not be real. Malicious users are publishing packages with those same names and the ideas of those features, and they're just malware. So this is scary. It's especially scary if you don't know coding and development, and you're just learning how to use these tools to build stuff like me, like you. So what can we do about it? In the rest of this video, we're going to explore. So what are dependencies? If, for example, I have a node file like I do right here, this was created on Bolt. Here, before you can run the app, you have to install all the dependencies. So in this case, the dependencies are front-end components, React front-end, Lucid, I believe, are icons. And then these are dev de dependencies. We need Vite, JS, um, more React, linting, Tailwind, CSS framework. So all this stuff needs to be installed. All of the internet is just a bunch of little building blocks of code other people have created before. They submit them to package managers, then you're free to use them for whatever you're creating. That's kind of a beautiful part about the internet. But what happens is these malicious actors are submitting fake dependencies to these package managers. So then when your LLM hallucinates, hallucinated package names are common, repeatable, and semantically plausible, creating a predictable attack surface that could be easily weaponized. So when these LLMs hallucinate, they're gonna keep hallucinating that same name. So these bad people are making malicious malware of dependencies like that. Now you see it's happening most uh, in Code Llama 7B, in uh, Mistral, it looks like Code Llama. So it's happening most in the op open source models, DeepSeek. It's not happening as much in GPT. Uh, I don't see Claude on here, so I'm not sure. But it's happening. It's happening regardless. It's even happening in GPT. The only way to mitigate this risk is to verify package names manually. So we want to verify these dependencies. But how can we do that without wasting too much time? Well, I had an idea. And I decided to try out Firebase Studio to do so. It's Google's version of Bolt or essentially Lovable uh, or Replit. And basically, hey, make me an app that does blank. So what I decided to do was come up with a prompt. And that prompt says, write me a script that validates all the packages in my package.json. So I said, I want to paste the contents of my package file for a Node or Python project. And then I want the app to verify the existence of these packages and the official package managers. So then Google Firebase gives me a plan, says this is what we're going to do. And I like this about Google Firebase as opposed to something like Bolt, which just does it. But here, Firebase says, okay, here's what we're going to do. Accept the user input of a package list. Use an AI tool that can extract package names and versions from the input text, package verification, verify the existence, and the official package manager. Verification report. Display, display a clear report indicating whether each package was found in its latest version. And then it even goes through the style guidelines, which I like. So I can say, oh, use these colors. Um, clean, sans serif font, iconography, and then you click prototype, which as you can see, I've already done here. Uh, and then it makes the prototype. And with Firebase, I needed to enter a Gemini API key, which I did not need to do in the other tests, but actually Firebase had it really easy. I just had to click a button and it generated the API key. The first iteration of your app prototype is ready. So here it is. And I had a couple problems. So we ran through it and we fixed it. And then here we are. So that's Firebase. And I wanted to try it in Bolt as well. I used the exact same prompt. I want to paste the contents of my package or requirements file for another Python project, blah, blah, blah. And it made this, and I can choose Python or NPM. I like the way it did that interface. This was Bolt. It asked no more questions. It just made it, and it worked all at once. Meanwhile, Firebase, it's a little bit more boring. Uh, this is a bit more exciting. And then I actually asked Claude as well. I said, hey, write me a script. And it gave me this whole script with, a, with an interface. So if I copy all that, I'm going to go into cursor 
I'm going to make a new file in cursor called package investigator.html and I'm going to save it. And as you can see, this whole thing is an, an HTML file body script. And it looks like most of this is all just going to be JavaScript. Preview it here and look, you can choose Python or Node. You paste it in. So I'm going to open that in my browser as well. So we're going to have all these different ones open and we're going to test the same data here and see what the results are. Now, this is only the first step because truly, after we verify them here, we need to, to do it right. You have to go through and verify the unique signing signatures of the creators of these packages. Hey everyone, real quick, if you're a digital entrepreneur trying to bring AI into your business to streamline and automate your workflows, you're gonna wanna learn the basics of the command line. I know it can feel intimidating. It does for everyone at first, including me, which is why I made this five-day bootcamp to help introduce you to it. You don't need to become an expert or a hacker man. You wanna learn how to harness AI, use AI coding agents like I do in this video to create your own tools, build an ecosystem that isn't limited to these SAAS services services that you pay for. So check out the link below. You can learn the basics and it'll help you out in your journey to be more knowledgeable and proficient with AI. This is something that's never really been a huge issue before because when you had to manually create code, you would choose packages that you know would work because you're making the code and you're, you're personal with it. But now we're just expecting the AI to do it all. And so when it's hallucinating and it makes stuff up, it might not be real. So these malicious actors are figuring that out. And so, yes, we want to verify it on our own, but this is only the beginning. What we really want to do is turn this into a script that will then, I imagine it's something along the lines of finding the public key of the developer, making sure it matches, verifying the hash, the 256 SHA hash of the package, and then it verifies everything. Like, okay, not only is it in the package manager, but it's got a real cryptographically authenticated creator. How are packages verified in Python and Node package managers? So first, let's understand how this works. Python, hash verification, HTTPS to encrypt connections, okay, Node.js, package signing, GPG keys, hash verification. So if that's in your wheelhouse, I would love to hear if you make a tool like this. It's a great startup idea. So now I just want to do one last version of it. And I want to do it with GPT 4.1 because GPT 4.1 has really been growing on me. It's not making mistakes. It's able to fix all this other stuff that Claude's doing. And it's not even a premium model on cursor. Like you can see Gemini 2.5 is premium. You have to pay more, but GPT 4.1, you're going to pay more. And I think it's better than those other ones. That's what's crazy. So I know we don't like open AI, but Hey, cheers. So same thing. I want to paste the pack, the contents of my package file for another Python project. And then I want the app to verify the existence of these package managers and the official package managers. I'm, just gonna, say, I'm gonna add one more line here, write the app. And so now GPT 4.1 is gonna make that. Now it looks like it's building off the code. Oh, that's interesting. So it checks, we have this other code that Claude made and it said, look, you already have a file that does just like that. You can use this app as is. If you wanna rebrand, rename or add features, tell me what you wanna change. Otherwise it will work for your case. Okay, so let's try this out now. I have dependencies right here, quite a few. So I'm gonna copy all these, and then I'm gonna go, we'll start in, we'll start here in um, Firebase, and let's see if that's the right syntax here. Okay, so Firebase seemed to work, maybe because it used the Gemini API key, and it says all of these are valid. Latest version, version match. So what I would say now, let's add a next step that verifies the signing signature and hash of the packages creator. That's a long shot, but let's just see. Meanwhile, let's try this. Um, we're gonna export the Bolt script and I'm just gonna run this locally instead. And let's see if it works any differently. I'm gonna open up a new terminal and I just write npm install. So if node package manager, install all the dependencies. Once again, this is where I might be installing malware, but I don't think so. Okay, we've installed. Now we just say node package manager run dev and it's going to create our development server. I command click that and then here we are. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in and it's validating all of them. So Bolt is working fine as anticipated. And then we still have this one that Claude made us, which it says just paste your package.json. Let's paste the whole file. Let's see. Package.json, copy, paste the whole section here. Now it's processing. Okay, so these were all found. Cool. Now, 
Let's try something new. Let's take something and let's write, <laughs> let's make our own. Jordan rocks. Let's call it Jordan rocks. <laughs> yeah, slash Jordan UI. Sure. No, Jordan rocks UI. And then um, we'll say version 4.20.69. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to save that. All right, we're going to copy that whole thing. And let's paste it into the validator and oh it couldn't find jordan rocks okay good on you bolt and then let's see couldn't find jordan rocks this was the claude package so now if i go back to firebase 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 has been working on that next step that verifies the signing signature and hash so let's see i put my fake one in firebase seems to do it all in the background without putting any um not putting anything on the screen as it does it okay cool and firebase couldn't find jordan rocks either so that's good. It's a shame I don't know any names of these malicious packages because I could just use one of those. I'll take that out. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, this is the Bolt package, and I'm going to say add in a second verification step in which the signing signature of the individual package is verified. Let's just see what happens there. Meanwhile, Firebase, I'm curious to know verify package existence dot ts and let's see i mean is it looking for a signature signature verified okay now i'm gonna say display on the front end the signature verification details and process as it processes meanwhile over here i've successfully implemented a second verification step for npm packages for python packages checks for this okay and we had the same thing going on with uh, our other tool, but I'm just going to kind of remove that one. We don't need to use the Claude one because everything else is working. This is probably my least favorite interface. I would say this one made by Bolt is my favorite interface. Um, this one just is kind of lame. So let's try this now with Node. I would need just the dependencies. Okay, cool. So it's not very clean here, but... We're verifying the SHA signatures. This time, let's use a Python file. Let's open up a Python requirements file. Here's one. I mean, that's easy, but let's try it. Signature verified NA, NA. All right, so it couldn't do that, but it could do superbase. Huh. So let's see what happens, huh? Uh, in the other one. Okay. It exists, but it couldn't be verified. None of these could be verified by this one. Found in PyPy data. I'm going to go back into our Bolt project here. We seem to be having trouble with the Python requirements. Before we added the signing verification, this our script could um, successfully find the existence of the packages, but now can't, and all verification fails. Okay, so let's see what Firebase does with these packages. With Python, once again, it couldn't get the other ones. So now I'm curious. I'm just going to Google that. And it's here, though. This is a real package. I mean, this is, this is like, so you can use a .in file. This is like a pretty core fundamental package. It's been verified. It's got, I don't know, Sar Sarab Kumar, props to you, brother. He's been here for 11 years. Um, so I'm not concerned about this script. Python resize image. Uh, resize image, there's image resize and resize image, but this one seems to be newer, so I'm, I'm glad we're using the newer one. It's been verified, the maintainers. So I think that's the main point here is we want to verify that all these are real. And so here I have a basic script, and if something fails, I'll just go verify manually. And that's essentially what this article was saying. Make sure you're verifying everything manually and never assume anything is real or safe. And unfortunately, that's just kind of what we got to do these days. All right, so now we're back in the Bolt package. We're going to wrap this up. I just wanted to check. So this could verify the existence, but it can't verify the key still. I'm not going to put any more time into figuring this out. Once again, if this is in your wheelhouse, I, this would be a great project. I think it would be really valuable for people. So whatever, I guess that means Firebase wins. Congratulations, Firebase Studio. You were able to accomplish this goal quickest. Uh, I'm not going to pull my hair out over this. One thing about vibe building is if you 
want to make sure you want to make sure you really want to finish something before you start it, especially if you're making a video of it. I, I wasn't building, I wasn't making this video to truly build something. I just wanted to test the functionality of these three options. And as you see it, Firebase Studio is pretty powerful. So is Bolt. It doesn't ask you as many questions about what you want to do. It doesn't give you as many options. You have to go back and use your prompts to fix that. And then, of course, when you use Claude, it's going to give you whatever that sloppy interface was. Um, but Bolt did have a better interface here. So this was very this was very brief. But as we're all learning how to vibe code, we need to be careful. We need to make sure that we are staying on top of what's going on out there because shit's going to get real. That's just how it is. We're going to live in the age of AI. So um, I'm not going to talk more about that because that's not the theme of this channel. But stay safe out there. If you like this video, thanks for liking. Hit the subscribe because we're building, baby. See you soon.